Kia ora whanau. Ko Mike Taitoku Takungua no Mania Potua Hau. For generations, my whanau lived and thrived on the, at the foot of our manga, our mountain, Kahuera. And they lived and thrived on the banks of our river, Moko. And for, for those generations, Papa Tūnuku, our earth mother, she nourished them and sustained them. And as you heard from Lou this morning, our earth mother, in all her glory, gifted us with the most vibrant and abundant flora and fauna and animals and insects than anywhere else. And in return every day for that gift she gave us, we thanked her, we cared for her, we loved her, and we worshipped her. When our land was illegally confiscated by the government, we became alienated from her. We could only, for future, for following generations, we could only stand by as spectators on the sideline and watch as her radiance was stripped bare. As her flora and fauna were replaced and swapped out with blades of grass and pine trees and sheep and cows. And we could only stand by on the sidelines and watch as spectators as every year thousands of tonnes of imported nitrogen and phosphate and poisons and chemicals like glyphosate and everything else were spread across her. And we could only stand by and watch as every day another piece of her peels off and gets washed away into our now polluted river. Our river's crying. Our fish are dying. 75% of our native fish species are on the edge of extinction. What have we done? Like, what the actual fuck have we done? When Europeans first arrived here, we as Māori, we embraced the tools and technologies that they brought with them. We were the first ones exporting goods and produce around the world on our ships to Australia, US and beyond. And it's well documented that at the time, people observed, missionaries and people who came here observed that we were able to thrive in an economy, our own economy, where our culture was vibrant and alive and healthy and well, our people were healthy and well. We looked after Papa Tūnuku, we had our own systems and processes and places to make sure that as she gifted us her bounty, we were able to make sure that we could gift our love back to her so that we could sustain this for millennia, for generations to come. That's well documented. Google it. Those tools and technologies at the time, our ships were burnt, confiscated and burnt, our tools were taken away. I don't know if any of you realise but or realise this, but back in the day, it's really hard to carry out business when you don't have any land and tools. Right? So our economy collapsed, our society started to break down, and our culture is still freaking awesome. Because you can take our land and you can take our capital, but they can't take our money away from us. And so as long as we remain mana whenua and tangata whenua, as long as we remain the people of the land with our other indigenous brothers and sisters around the world, Papa Tuanuku has a chance. But to have a chance, we have to embrace the tools and technologies at our fingertips once again. We have to make sure that our values and our aspirations and, the, and our views on how we need to, our worldview on how we need to protect her, are at the front of that design process, not at the back. This is not about tools and technologies, it's about us. So how do we do that? We follow the guidance of our ancestors as we always have. We use our senses to stay connected and we take the advantage of the tools and technologies we have at our fingertips right now. Our senses and their senses. We now have at our disposal sensor technology with its radars, water sensors in the water, fixed wing drones, kia ora Alex, with hyperspectral cameras, we can now see our, for ourselves our Papa Tuanuku in a completely different lens. We can see topography, geology, hydrology, and all the other ologies. We can see our cultural data and our wahitapu, our um, sites of cultural significance in there. We can start to understand for ourselves what is actually going on in real life. 
If we want to talk about the quality of our fresh water, we can see chlorophyll from space, and we can see chlorophyll from sensors coming off the lake itself. We've got a platform that we've developed. So that last tech, we're bringing technologies like that last one, which is one of my ones called Takiwa together, putting it on a Toha platform form to create an investment model where we can flow uh, gifts into that model and funnel impact, where we can actually measure in real time what impact looks like. If you're going to drop a million dollars into this funnel, don't, do not drop it in unless you're absolutely clear that everyone's going to know what the result was out the other end. The only way we're going to solve this problem is having much more transparency, much more open conversations about how we're going to solve this problem. There was a really difficult conversation that took place yesterday. A lot of people were wildly uncomfortable, right? We have to stop taking those conversations offline and have them out in the open. Let's have them not in a meeting room in Wellington with 15 officials. Have them in the paddock. Right? We're doing a presentation this afternoon, if anyone's interested. I'm not, I've spent a lot of time on the why, not the what, but we'll show you what the what looks like. On Thursday, a bunch of us are going up to visit some farms where we've replaced the one blade of grass out with 9 to 12. We've got all the imported fertilisers and chemicals off the farm from day one. We've stopped drenching from day one because our rotation process means that the cows aren't eating their own crap anymore. Papa Tuanuka is starting to sustain this land and this, these people once again in the way that she knows how. The soil is healthy, the farms are healthy, the farmers are healthy, the pastures, as you can see, are healthy. The fresh water that runs through those drains and into the rivers is clean. And if you look in the background, in this photo I took when a penny finally dropped for me with all our education, health and all the kind of housing and challenges we've been working on when I stood in the paddock having this corridor about what we needed to do and I looked in the background and saw those trees. Those pine trees are referred to apparently as a carbon sink. Look at that paddock. You want to know what a carbon sink looks like? Go and stand there and dig up a little wee bit of soil and put it back again and you'll see what carbon looks like in real life. So we invite anyone to jump on this waka. The waka is setting sail. There's a whole bunch of absolutely incredible people in this room here who have already jumped on it and there's people outside who are already on it and there's people outside who are ready to get on. Anyone is welcome to get on that waka. There's only two caveats. Firstly, you need to get on that waka with an absolute firm commitment and a belief that we can solve this and be courageous enough to then bring your gift to the table. There's no such thing as a big or small gift. It's a big agenda, and we've got big and small gifts. And the second thing, if you want to walk, get on that waka with us, you have to be prepared to keep up because that waka is going at supersonic speed because we ain't got time to piss around anymore waiting for the next policy framework or the next Fonterra strategy or working group. How's this? We do it. How about we never have a working group? <laughs> right? With our sensors and with the use of technologies at our fingertips now, we can bring our sensors and their sensors together once again. So we could say to Papa Tuanuku, we see you and we feel you and we love you. And we're never going to turn our back on you ever again. Kia ora koutou katoa.